Hi, I'm Deborah, part of cohort 13 of the Data School within the Information Lab. Thank you for tuning in for how to use the rank function in Tableau. There are two different ways for you to create a rank calculation. One of them is by using the downside error on the data pane and choose the option Create Calculated Field. I would always recommend to have this pane on the right hand side of your calculation editor so that you can understand all the functions you'll be using. So we can see that are all of these different rank calculations. Let's just use the first one first. Okay, we have added this function onto our uh, calculation editor, but we can see that the calculation right now contains errors, so we need to change it. By looking at the example, we can see we need to specify what is the measure we want our rank to be calculated on. So in this case, we want to rank our customers based on the number of orders they made. So we want our rank to be based on count distinct of order ID. Something you can do is just press the control button if you are in Windows or command if you are on a Mac and drag the count distinct order ID pill onto your calculation and inside the parentheses. As you can see, there is that orange indicator telling you where it will be placed. And after doing this, you'll see your calculation is now valid. The last thing we need to do is change the name of our calculation. So this should be rank based on number of orders. You can also specify if you want your rank to be in ascending or descending order. So if the number one should be assigned to where the contesting number of order ID is higher or lower. By default, it will be in descending order, as you can see on this pane, but you can change it by adding a comma and just writing down ASC with, um, within speech marks. And there you go. This would be the rank in ascending order, but we just want it to be in descending, so I won't be adding it. It's just nice for you to know there is that option. Now that our calculation is valid, we can go ahead and press OK. The next step will be adding our rank calculation onto our table that right now contains the customer names and the number of orders they have placed, the distinct number of orders they have placed. And it's also in descending order. So let's just bring our rank number of orders onto these measure values uh, card and this way we have an extra column with our rank. So now the rank has been calculated across the different customers. Another way of creating this same calculation is to having the measure you want to base your rank on. So in this case, count distinct of order ID, you can simply click on the pill and choose the option add table calculation. On calculation type, you can then choose the rank type of calculation. And there you go. As you can see, it has exactly the same result. So these are the two different ways you can create rank calculation. Now let's look into the different rank types. Just because of time, we have this table where I have added all of the different ranks. So we have the same customer name, distinct count of orders and the original rank. I just added all the different types as well. And as you can see, if I look into all of these calculations, for example, rank dance, you can see the calculation is exactly the same. We just add an underscore and specify what is the type of rank. All the rest is the same. Let's look into the rank modified. Rank modified will be similar to the original. The original is just a standard competition rank where the identical values will have the same rank. With the rank modified, that also happens. But as you can see, rather than having the number of the first occurrence, it has the number, the rank of the last occurrence. So as you can see, these numbers are ranked as eight and not two. And this will be the difference. The rank dance also assigns 
identical values with identical ranks. The difference is that it assures that there are no gaps. So as you can see, it goes from one to two, but instead of then jumping to nine, as it would in our original, it just continues with number three. So it just continues the sequence. As for the rank unique, as the name says, uh, even though they can have the same value, the rank will always be different. So as you can see, Sally and Patrick, for example, they have the same number of orders, but Sally is number, rank number three and Patrick is number four. The last type of rank will be the rank percentile that I have changed to actually be formatted in a percentage format because that's basically what it is telling us. So as you can see, on one hand of the table, we have close to 100%. And then the other end of the table, it will be closer to zero because our table is ordered. This is basically telling you where in the spread of your data the values are positioned. So 50% would technically be our median. And this can be very useful if you just want to understand where uh, in your data each value is. The last part of this video is understanding how you can configure how your table calculation, in this case rank, should be computed. So this is something that you can use for all the table calculations, but in this case we are looking at the rank one. How do you even go into having that possibility. If you click on your table calculation and table calculations will be identified with this triangle, you can click on the pill and choose the option edit table calculation. This will open this menu. Now by default it will be chosen option table down which is simply going into all the rows on your table and give a rank for each of the rows. As you can see, we are now looking into the rank unique, just as I believe it's easier to understand. You can see that um, they are just given a number for each of these um, rows. Now, if you go into specific dim dimensions, this is where you can really gain control. I'm just quickly going to show you a way that I hope can help you read uh, this window. This is how I like to read it. For each unticked field, compute the name of the calculation by the ticked fields. So as you can see, in this case, what we are doing is for each category, compute the rank unique number of orders by subcategory. And now let's actually go into the table and see this in action. If instead of table down, we change to specific dimensions and we apply what we have just seen uh, that slide, so unticking category, we can see now the rank is calculated for each category by subcategory. So it is going to assign a, a rank, but it will only calculate that within each category. I hope this can make sense. Now, if I change it, instead of unticking category, I untick subcategory, you'll see that the result is that the number is always one. Why is this? Because we are trying to calculate, let's just open this again. We are trying to calculate for each subcategory by category. Now, each subcategory will only belong to one category, so it is impossible to have a number different than one. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Also, check out our latest uploads and related videos that you can click on the screen.